Is there a strategy that'll help you grow your company faster? CEO Sales Strategies is an investigative business podcast for entrepreneurial people who never stop asking questions. Highly acclaimed sales revenue growth expert, Doug C. Brown, interviews CEOs, business owners, and professionals who serve them to uncover and share actionable tips and methods behind their bulletproof sales strategies. Topics covered on the show include their failures, struggles, secrets, and processes that help them succeed in selling millions to billions of dollars of their products and services, all with the sole aim of helping you grow your business. If you are eager to know the most effective sales secrets from the A players of the game, then the CEO Sales Strategies Podcast is certainly the place to be. Hey, everybody, this is Doug C. Brown with the CEO Sales Strategy Podcast, and I got a great guest for you today. Her name is Janissa Holland Shedd, and she's from JJ Studios. She's a co-founder, and they are an organization that really focuses on helping people uh, with marketing uh, as well as other uh, facets of the business. Um, She's highly intelligent. She was one of the forerunners of Uber, and we're going to talk a lot about how they did it at Uber and how you can take lessons from Uber as well as lessons uh, that she's doing now. And you're going to find out, we talked a lot about performance-based partnerships, which I call building an agency. And uh, it's a very powerful tool for for driving. We're going to talk about uh, how they're doing for referrals. Uh, We're going to talk about how to use LinkedIn. Um, and a whole bunch of other great stuff about the, the, the success pieces to growing a company. Um, cause she was responsible for driving tens of millions to hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue for Uber. And they did it on a guerrilla marketing play. All right, without further ado, let's go to the interview. Hey everyone, this is Doug C. Brown. Welcome to the CEO sales strategy podcast. And we got a great guest for you today. She's a very, very smart lady. Her name is Janissa Hollinshed. And she has a a company called JJ Studio. And uh, get this, guys. uh, They added a million dollars in revenue in six months um, to the business. So that's why she's here. We're going to talk about sharing a little bit of the CEO sales strategies that she's using. She's a co-founder in JJ Studio. And um, they are a, well, Janissa, welcome to the program. Why don't you tell people what you do? (laughs) Thanks. I'm excited to be here. Um, So what we do is we provide fractional COO and CMO services to startups all the way through Series C funded companies. And we also do project-based work on marketing operations and product launches. Wonderful. So uh, also those of you guys who didn't catch that, that is uh, funding. If you're looking for funding for your company, uh, she's the lady to talk to. Uh, She's got a lot of experience there. We've talked about this in the past. Uh, She's also got some really, I think you've got some really great experience uh, for what you're doing because I mean, you were one of the, I would just say one of the forerunners, not founders, but forerunners and initial people there that helped build a very small company into a very large company called Uber. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I always wanted to know this. Now I know Uber, you know, with the pandemic has taken a little bit of a hit, but it'll come back again as soon as things are cleared, I suspect. Yep. Um, but you were there right from the beginning and, and you, were, you were the driver in a lot of the areas of Uber's growth. What was Uber's uh, secret sauce, if you will? What was their what was their primary driver of driving revenue in the company that you would look at it and say, okay, this is a this is a sales revenue strategy? Yeah. Um. So I would say in the early days. So um, I joined in January of 2015, which was relatively early for the company. Um. All the way through to really around IPO time, we had a super localized strategy. Um, And what that means is they hired really, really smart people to figure out how to grow the company without spending very much money. And so what that meant is uh, we would basically do things like go to bars when they're closing um, and offer people their first rides with a discount. 
um, to, to show them what Uber was and get them right at that moment when they were going to need a ride and kind of get them hooked on the product. Um, we also did things like negotiating partnerships um, for no out-of-pocket money. And instead it was performance-based partnerships, um, which allowed us to grow really rapidly and identify partners that could help spread the word and increase our audiences. Uh, and then we really, um, we experimented with everything. Um, and when you get that many people that are really passionate about what they're doing uh, into a room and tell them, you know, this is the goal, have at it. Uh, you come up with some really, some really cool ways of, of getting those goals or achieving them. Uh, and so we, uh, we tried a little bit of everything and then we would share our ideas with the other teams uh, and they would spread them to their cities. And that's kind of how we made it work. So I want to kind of unpack that a little bit because there were four sure. really great points that I caught out of this and I might've sure. missed one. So if I didn't, let me know. Firstly, you hire really great, passionate people and yep. get out of their way pretty much, yep. right? And we um, at Chet Holmes International, when I worked there as a president of training and sales, we used to do the same thing. We used mm -hmm. to go find what we call mavericks, the people that people would go, my gosh, they're not really a good corporate person. Uh, and we put them in there and they would light the world on fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a great, great strategy. Uh, number two, I love what you did. You go into the bars, like you're doing guerrilla marketing, you know, you're just yeah. kind of walking in into the bars, uh, recognizing, hey, there's a person who needs a ride. Let's offer them the experience of Uber. Mm -hmm. um, and there, and, are hmm? there are lots of things like that. I'm, you know, giving bartenders at local college hangouts, really nice church key bottle openers that said Uber and maybe had a discount code on them, things like that. It's just identifying that opportunity when people are going to need the product and making sure you're there. Well, I think what you said was permission uh, or a performance-based partnerships, but what, what you're creating when you're doing those type of things and everybody listen up, cause this is really important. Um, what you're doing. And I, I talk a lot to uh, my folks about building what I call agencies, right? Which are those performance-based partnerships that you were talking about, because that gives a, a, an instant increase in the sales force without having to put a lot of funds into it. Of course, we got to manage the independent channel of that. But what we do there is we exponentially grow our reach through people who already have our client base that we're looking to reach. So I think it's brilliant what you folks did. And I love the fact that you go into the bars, go in and, and do the guerrilla marketing things. I mean, I remember uh, an auto dealership, uh, you know, a, a luxury auto dealership. They, they we, We'd go down to the country club and we'd pull up into, you know, Mercedes mm -hmm. or whatever and say, hey, um, why don't you take this for the weekend? See what you think, Smart. right? Super smart. <laughs> well, mo most of the time they didn't return the car without paying for it. Right. So, yeah. um, and then I, the fourth point was you got, you let people get creative. Mm -hmm. And so many times within organizations, I see this creativity gets stifled because the ownership or the leadership is, is really putting the fear into the people saying, listen, if you get out of line, we're going to fire you. Mm -hmm. But from what I understand from what you just said is you kind of did the opposite. You're like, Hey, listen, come up with these great ideas. Let's try to implement them and find new low cost, high yield uh, tactics for marketing and, and client generation. Is yeah, that right? Absolutely. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, now we know why Uber grew the way it did <laughs> folks. <laughs> it, it wasn't just a fluke. <laughs> well, it goes back Jenny, sir, to a lot of times people are like, well, how long did it take you to be an overnight success in what you're doing? Right. And they don't see all the hard work that you and others had put into Uber. Um, we just see Uber like all over the, the globe yeah. pretty quickly. So really cool. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to plug this uh, because you're working on this really cool project. It's, it's called the knowledge society or, yeah. or you, right. And so this is an accelerator for kids basically yeah. for, for exactly. technology, right? Yep, it's a global innovation program or an educational accelerator for teenagers. That is so cool. So <laughs> the fact that you can work and give back and, and, and start shaping the youth that's going to take over in years to come, uh, a really noble thing. I see some very successful companies doing that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I see a lot of companies not doing that. So everybody get out and do it. Um, pass on your knowledge because... <laughs> you know, they're going to be uh, making the decisions for, for the 
people when we get older, <laughs> yeah. right? Like we are doing right now for the people that are older today. Absolutely. So, uh, so kudos to that. Um, I wanted to go to how also you were building your business. You know, you added a million dollars in revenue in six months and you were saying about 60% of it, if I got it correctly, was through word of mouth. Yes. Referrals. Can you talk to people? Some people are like, oh, wow. Okay. That's, I can imagine here in 60%, my gosh, that, is that a fluke? Is it, was it hard? Like, what did you do? <laughs> you know, I'm so kind of calling back to what you were talking about, about the, the years of hard work um, that you put into to getting to this point. Um, I, I've really made it a point to help people that I, I'm not benefiting from, um, you know, throughout the years, throughout my career to share their job postings, to make recommendations to them, to, to give them advice when, when it's warranted or when they ask for it. Um, and in doing so, I've created a lot of goodwill. Um, and so that's one part of it. I, and then when people found out I was available and no longer at Uber, they started to get really excited about that and make recommendations for me to, to other clients, to make introductions or to ask me to actually work with them, uh, because they had just been waiting for that time. Um, but that's one part of it. That was the very beginning. And now really what we do is we prove to our clients that we have their long-term best interests in mind, um, because what we do is we really will build a playbook for them um, so that they can start to replicate or in-house what we do for them. And so we're teaching and educating and we're not just dragging out contracts um, or projects to, to benefit ourselves, right? And our viewpoint is that if we teach these clients how to do what we're doing and we educate them and then they bring what we're doing in-house, they're going to find more work for us to do that um, on. Right. And, and that's been the case. And then they get excited about that too. And they start recommending us to people they know or other CEOs. And, and that's made up a lot of the growth, uh, after we got started. So I don't think everybody caught the subtlety in what you said. So I'm just going <laughs> to go back to it. <clears throat> Basically what you're doing is what Jay Abraham, uh, uh, taught, which mm -hmm. is, Go give it all away and, and do the right thing and do the, you know, get paid, but give it away, give more value, far more than you're getting paid for. And magically that kind of opens up new opportunities for us yeah. when we're doing that. Um, so those of you who are out there, you know, running your companies, drive your sales teams to do the exact same thing. You don't have to give it away. You don't have to discount. You don't have to do all of that stuff, but go above and beyond. Don't be differentiated, be different and be different in a positive way. Uh, and what will happen is you'll find that goodwill that you were talking about, Janissa, is just built and then people trust you. So when they trust you, uh, it's a natural conversation. Hey, you know, can you help somebody that I know? Or, hey, I'm looking for this specific type of profile um, to help do what I do. Um, do you know a half dozen to a dozen people that might be interested in that? Right. And, and people make so much uh, resist, uh, they put so much resistance in about referrals because they're afraid of a, a rejection or it might ruin the relationship. Mm -hmm. But what I'm hearing is if you do the really great job and you promote that goodwill, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to work out great. Yep. I've never had anybody say no to a request to be a referral or to provide referrals, but typically they're just providing them of their own volition uh, because they're excited about what we've done for them. That's excellent. And the thing about refer uh, referrals that people don't think about is their endorsements. Mm -hmm. They're endorsements folks. So, you know, you know, we go and we would love to be endorsed by somebody or something in the industry that we're in that says, you know, hey, you're great. Like I'd love an endorsement from Oprah Winfrey, for example, <laughs> right. right now, right? You know, Oprah says Doug is, you know, the greatest thing on, on the planet, right? That would be great. But for me to go get an endorsement for Oprah where I don't have that goodwill or that relationship built takes a long time. However, if I help somebody who knows Oprah, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, they say something like if Mr. Tony Robbins, for example, says something to Oprah, Oprah's going to be like, yeah, sure, I'll talk to Doug. Mm-hmm. So it's that power of connection. And I think it goes back to, you know, what you said, performance-based partnerships, right? It seems to be the theme of what I'm hearing through this. 
Um, and that performance-based partnership in, in a lot of ways is the referral network that you've built that's driven a significant amount of revenue for most companies, no matter what size they are, uh, in a very short period of time. And I, and, uh, I also love the fact that you folks, you're like, I had no experience, pretty much. I mean, you knew how to use LinkedIn, but you, just from a corporate perspective or, or a social perspective, but you turn LinkedIn into actually a prospecting tool for you and it drives about 25% of the business. Yep, yep, exactly. Okay, so I gotta ask the question because <laughs> everybody's probably wondering. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> On LinkedIn? Yeah, how do you do it? Because a lot of people think it's so complicated, right? Yeah, um, well, I, I share things regularly on LinkedIn that are funny. I think they're funny at least, um, or interesting or helpful. Um, I engage with people in an authentic way too, because people can tell when you're just engaging to engage from a mile away and they hate that. I hate that. It's like, oh, you know, a post on LinkedIn that I was going to an interview and somebody cut me off and it was a dog, but then that dog was the hiring manager at the interview I was going to and I got the job, you know, like that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but I engage with people. I share, like I said, I share their job postings. I try to connect them with other people and make introductions. I don't really do a ton of hard selling um, on LinkedIn uh, and people, they, they comment on what I'm saying. It, it, they see the things that I'm saying and I start to build up a brand, essentially a personal brand. And that extends to my company. Uh, and then, you know, if I have a question for someone um, about, hey, could you introduce me to this person? Or what do you think about this thing? It's much more natural. And that's really, that's what I'm doing now. Well, uh, authenticity. I mean, you're being authentic. And, and uh, again, don't differentiate, be different, <laughs> right? Because most people on LinkedIn are not. Right. I mean, no disrespect to LinkedIn, but I mean, if you look at profiles of people like I do this all the time with, uh, you know, one of the mistakes that companies make when they hire salespeople is they try to hire from a resume. Right. Yep. And you can use the resume, but the resume is full of lies. We all know this. We all beef up our own resume. I mean, we look great on paper. Right. Mm -hmm. So I start questioning what's in that resume and say, well, geez, did you really instrument this? How did you do this? And you find out that they were part of the team, but they weren't the driver of the team or something, right? So it's it's not that people are intentionally trying to lie. It's just a bit of puffery to um, get them to stand out and, and get the interview. So, but you're being engaging and being authentic. And that is a very big key on, I would say any, most social media channels that are legitimate. Um, and you're, you're sharing things, by the way, your stuff is funny. I got to tell everybody <laughs> it is funny. All right. So, <laughs> and what it comes back to though, is you're building goodwill. You're constantly building goodwill. And so many companies today, they, they don't realize what business they're in. You, I think you do uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're in the business of people. In a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of um, communication and education and really just making relationships. When we educate someone, let's talk about that for a second. Cause when we educate somebody, a lot of people are like, well, what do I talk about? It's like, all you have to do is have a little bit of knowledge above and beyond. I mean, you don't have to you know, have three PhDs to in, in a certain subject matter. Right. I mean, you just have to position a little bit, I would say, offering them help and then them finding value in it. That kind of positions you as an expert. Mm -hmm. Do I have this correct? I think so. Yeah. And a lot of times I learn with my clients as well. I'm learning about their industry. Um, they're teaching me that and I'm teaching them best practices that I've learned along the way. And, and we come to something new that works for them uh, individually. All right. So everybody, if you didn't catch that, be authentic, build goodwill, by the way, make people laugh. They love to laugh because not enough people <laughs> laugh. Do it legitimately. Stay away from the things that we all talk about, politics, religion, spousal jokes, things like that. And start developing a relationship. And then a very simple, what I call permission-based ask, mm -hmm. right? It's like, hey, listen, I was thinking that you might be able to give me some good information on this, or you might know somebody. Could I ask you a few questions? Yeah, absolutely. I did that recently. Um, one of my clients was meeting with a venture capital group and I knew a few of my connections, knew the founder of this group. And I reached out and I just said, Hey, I, 
you know, hope you're doing well. Just wanted to touch base because I thought I'm, you might be able to help me out. If you're not the right person, that's totally okay. Is it all right if I ask you a few questions about this person? And they were all totally fine with it. And, and that's awesome. So what if they weren't totally fine with it? What if they were saying, no, no, I just, I don't think this is the right fit. Are you going to, you know, like, is the day end or oh. do you just, you kind of move on, right? You just move on. Yeah. It's not personal. You just say, thanks anyway. I appreciate it. Hope you have a good one. <laughs> the reason I bring that up, Jenny says, because so many people, when I talk to them about these type of things, they, um, and especially in organizations, they're afraid of rejection. They're afraid of, 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 of the rejection itself. So they, they don't move forward in what I would call courage. You know, you can still be fearful, but move forward anyways. And so what they're missing out on is the, the actual outcome of success due to the fact of that. But somebody like yourself has this, um, I would say this personality, which is, you know, I think where, you know, you, you talked about the hero being your dad yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and persevering. I remember in your article, um, I think, you know, you, you just have this perseverance thing. It's like, listen, okay, there's going to be a certain law of averages. And I know that up front. So therefore it's not personal rejection. It's just the law of averages. Some are going to work out. Some are not. Some are going to stall. Some are going to go long-term. Um, and I, I see that as a, as a success trait in you and in your business. Uh, and obviously for Uber too. Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. I think perseverance has a lot to do with it and not taking rejection personally. So all of you are running companies out there or driving sales for companies, you know, <laughs> persevere because, you know, the, the world's not broken right now, no matter what people say. There are people who are growing by a million dollars in six months. Uh, you know, one of my last clients grew by $3 million in six weeks. Wow. Um, you know, and I want to learn from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can teach you what we did. <laughs> okay. You know, but the reality is a lot of people they're focusing on doom and gloom. And mm -hmm. and what what I see you doing is the exact opposite of what I teach people, especially in a down economy, right? A down economy or down pandemic, um, is push the pedal down on your marketing. Mm -hmm. Go out there and make get into the public square, be the bigger presence, go out and drive this thing. Cause now during the downtime, firstly, a lot of the competitors are pulled back. So you won't have less competition, but you're also creating lots of goodwill folks. And uh, as you're creating that goodwill, then what ends up happening through that process is when things turn around for them, well, do they call you Janissa or is it just a fictitious thing that I'm saying? So, oh, I mean, they call me, I've had uh, several clients who have said, Hey, we got some of our budget back now that we're recovering. Let's expand our contracts or let's, let's get started on this other project we were putting off. You know, I could talk to you for so long because we have so many great things, <laughs> <laughs> but I know, I know you, the listeners, but I can't do that forever. So we're talking with Janisa Hollingshed from uh, co-founder of JJ Studios. Um, I wanted to you had this really cool giveaway you wanted to give to the audience. Um, I can explain it, but I'd rather have you do it if you don't mind. Yeah. So I, my co-founder, Julia Limbersky and I, we wanted to give away um, $500 worth of consulting services uh, to one listener that's listening here. Um, and that could be anything from pitch deck review or practice introductions, um, help with a, a marketing channel, a playbook creation, whatever you need. Uh, and so the way that we would like to do this is uh, we are still a new company. Um, we would like to, to get our name out there a little bit, get some more awareness. So the way to enter this is to um, like us or follow us on LinkedIn um, and or on Facebook. Uh, and then I, if you share our page on your Facebook or your LinkedIn, you'll get an extra entry, one extra entry for Facebook and one extra for LinkedIn. Performance-based partnerships. <laughs> I got to tell you. <laughs> See, I, again, I, 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 listeners, look, folks, here's the bottom line. She's looking at things strategically always from how do I get multiple outcomes out of everything I do? And it's something that I teach my clients to do too. So I, I love the fact that you do this. And okay, so they, they go to your, 
how do they get to your LinkedIn page or how do they get to your Facebook page? I mean, I'll post this stuff in the, in the notes for everybody, but sometimes people are driving and they're like, well, I don't have time to write this down, but. Yep. Um, so, so um, our LinkedIn, I actually, we'll just link it on our website. If you go to jjstudio.agency, we'll put both links on the homepage there for you just to keep it simple. There you go. jjstudioagency.com. Hey jjstudio.agency. Oh, jjstudio.agency. Yep. Thank you. Um, and we'll put that in the show notes as well. Uh, it's been a really great pleasure having you here. I, I enjoy talking to you every single time we, we converse. And I'm very grateful you came here. I, I believe the, everybody's going to get a lot out of there. Um, and remember, you got $500 worth of free consulting, guys. And um, I can vouch for these ladies. They're actually the pros doing this. So, uh, you know, go get a pitch deck review, go get something, uh, and, you know, share with your crowd. And the more you share with your crowd, the more points you get, the more points you get, the closer you get to that. So, uh, and remember performance-based partnerships, because this is a really cool thing, uh, and building goodwill. Um, I always wanted to ask you this question. I haven't asked you this question in the past. If you could be a superhero for a day, right? Uh, any superhero, past or present, who would that be? And what would you do to better the world at that moment? Yeah. Um, I love Batman. I've always loved Batman because he's just a normal guy who does really cool things. And I, he uses a lot of tech and I, he also has a really strong moral code. So I love Batman. I'd be Batman for a day. And what would I do to make the world a better place? Oh, that is such a broad question. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or a better place for today. What would you do yeah. today to make him as Batman, which is a pretty cool character? Batman. I, well, Bruce Wayne is ridiculously wealthy. So maybe this isn't even like a superhero thing, but I'm, I, I would start, uh, I'd start a scholarship fund for kids in Appalachia uh, to help them get to college. And I would make it a pretty large one. That is a huge superhero <laughs> thing. So <laughs> that, that's huge. I mean, look, hero based. I, I have a friend who actually has a company that drives like hero based membership, right? Mm -hmm. And it's all about doing things for community in one way or another. It's, you know, the fact is that a lot of these people are successful. Um, and even if they're on their way up being successful, they, they do things like you just talked about. Um, and that really is the superhero, which ties back, if everybody didn't catch this, back to building goodwill. It's like doing the right thing by people, uh, as you said early on in, in our conversation, which you go above and beyond and you do the right thing and you build goodwill. So I want to thank you for being here. Thank uh, you so I, much. I, <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed myself. When you said Batman, I, I remember watching the Batman movie with my kids when they were little, the the the, the Lego one. And one. <laughs> what was that? I didn't see that one. Yeah, it was the Lego. It was like a Lego Batman movie, and yeah. and Bruce Wayne was in his in his uh, cave, and uh, he was all up. Uh, oh, it was Alfred who brought the mail to him, right? Uh, and, and they kept talking and it was like, Hey, sorry, Mr. Wayne, you know, your, uh, your bed, bath and beyond coupons have expired, but I hear that they're good no matter what date you bring them in. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so sorry folks for that one, but the, <laughs> the reality is, uh, so Janissa Hollingshed, uh, JJ studios, thank you for being here. It's, uh, been a blast and, uh, I, Folks, go take her up on the, uh, the, the, the $500 worth of free consulting. I think you'll get way more than you figured out of that. Thank so you th so much. You're welcome. Wow. Was that a great conversation? I found a lot of value in that and I suspect you have too. And, you know, here's the thing. When you build a lot of goodwill, you'll get a lot of reviews. You got to get out into the public square first, right? That means you got to reach out. Just like uh, Janissa and I talked about on LinkedIn, don't be afraid of the rejection. It's going to be part of the game. Now, they're not personally rejecting you. And even if they do, it's because they're having a bad day um, in most cases. So you just keep trucking on and realize out of 100 people, you know, a percentage are going to say, heck, yeah. 
percentage are going to say, heck no. And a percentage are going to say, well, maybe. And, uh, you know, that's, you just stay with these people. And um, so you want to build goodwill. Don't be afraid to use good, clean humor because people love to laugh. You know, many people are having tough days at times. If you can make them smile, uh, they're going to be far more open to having conversations with you and building out things. Uh, we did talk, as you you know, about performance-based partnerships. I'm a big proponent about building those type of things. If you don't know how, let me know. Uh, I will be happy to uh, direct you in the right direction. Um, and, you know, we talked about great, passionate people, you know, uh, getting creative on the, the marketing side, but low cost methodology, which is a lot of people call this guerrilla marketing because uh, Jay Conrad Levinson was the first guy who sort of made this popular. But you can do a lot of things to generate business if you just get creative and think and hire the right people, the people who are the mavericks, the people who are going to be the drivers. They may drive you a little crazy because they are they are drivers, but bottom line is they do a lot of great things and you allow them to get creative and they will get creative with you. So um, you don't have to do hard selling. That is a key. You know, when you build goodwill and you get great reviews and you get great endorsements, the hard selling is no need for it whatsoever. All right. So don't forget to go get referrals. Don't forget to use LinkedIn. Uh, don't forget to use the lessons in what you've learned today in this podcast. And I thank you for being here. If you like this, please go give it a five star review. Uh, comment, please, and uh, get back to me and let me know what you'd like me to talk about in future episodes, uh, because I'm going to keep bringing you the brightest and best minds uh, uh, of people who are successful uh, in their fields so that you can then take what they've done and just model that process so that you can employ it into your business as well. Again, this is Doug C. Brown with the CEO Sales Strategy Podcast, signing off for another time. Make it a great day and to your success.